He will have mercy on him. In other words, he's not going to give him what he deserves. What did he deserve? Death. He's going to give him what he didn't deserve. What's that? Life. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Not just pardon, abundantly pardon. But pardon means to forgive. It's the same word. Pardon, forgive. He will forgive. He will pardon. Abundantly in this text means as if it didn't even happen. As if the debt never existed. All right? They're, they're, see, see, on a human level, right, we'll clear the debt, but we keep a record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll clear the debt, but we won't forget. That's God's ways are not our ways. He says, when I clear the debt, it didn't happen. You say, but what about that debt? He goes, what debt? Said, what? what? What about that thing? What thing? What? what? You know, last year, what, what? <laughs> but us, no, we, 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 we keep a record. Bring it up from time to time. To ourselves. Oh, you thought I was talking about to other people. I'm talking about to, to ourselves. You remember what you did, Richie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it starts there, then it moves on to others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that called, Richie? Oh, witchcraft. Oh, whoo, straight to the point. Yeah, control. You're bringing up the past to control an outcome. Manipulate that person towards a certain end. Hebrews 12, 15, I'll let it tell us the story. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bringing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Need to unpack this. You see, grace is not the failure. God's grace flows. What he's saying is, is the failure is on our part now to be able to, to receive the fullness of that flow. Peter asked the question of Jesus to give it some context. Peter says to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? I'm thinking, why seven? What, what, what's the deal with seven? He could have said like, you know, any number, but he picks on seven. As we know, seven means completion and perfection. In other words, perfect forgiveness is complete forgiveness. It's not a half uh, forgive on the condition of. It's an unmerited, unearned, undeserved forgiveness because that's love. That's the cross. That's Christ and him crucified. Jesus says to him, oh man, I don't say to you up to seven times. I say 70 times seven. So that's a, that's a divine level of uh, complete and total forgiveness. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, which is the grace that we live in, is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him. You know, accounting is often used with regards to righteousness. The accounting term, when Abraham was, it was accounted, attributed to him as righteous, that was a, an accounting term. So, so this, this is why he's brought righteousness into the perimeters of this discussion around uh, walking offense-free. When he had begun to settle accounts, he was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Say 10,000 talents. Hold that thought. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and that the payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, that's love, released him and forgave him the debt. The principle spiritually is this is Christ revealed through the cross to humanity. Forgave the debt. 10,000 talents. How much is 10,000 talents? Thanks for asking. One talent is 6,000 denarii. One denarii was an average day's wages. One denarii is a day's wages. One talent is 6,000 denarii. Therefore, one talent is 16 years' wages. So if the servant owed 10,000 talents, it's going to take him 1,975 lifetimes to pay it off. If the average life expectancy of this guy as a New Zealander is 81.7 years. <laughs> oh, man. 
How did you rack up that kind of debt, bro? <laughs> it's inherited. Passed down since Adam. Born into it. So no one lifetime is going to be able to address this debt. 1,975 lifetimes to pay it off. So what's the, the Bible is really going out of its way to make a point, all right? It's outside of our ability to perform towards or earn, all right? It's so far beyond our ability. So then the Bible says along came Jesus and he nailed that debt to the cross. That's the price. Not only did he nail the debt to the cross, then he preloaded your account. Oh, yeah. Oh, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, full stop. That's it. You are so profoundly, we are so profoundly blessed because of who he is. But the parable's not finished. Wait, there's more. Nearly there. Pick up from verse 28. So the forgiven servant went out, found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii, laid his hands on him, took him by the throat. This is an offense, an action. Pay me what you owe. 100 denarii equals four weeks work. It's doable. Humanly doable. But remember, the guy who's owed four weeks, right, was forgiven 160,000 years worth of Wages. So now we're getting context on this issue from God's point of view. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me, I will pay you all. He would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. This is pride now being revealed through the nature. And the reason I say that is because God has revealed forgiveness to him through the cross. Now he's withholding that from this guy. He's withholding, he's withholding what Christ himself has be performed towards the servant. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved, came and told their master all that he had done. Then his master, after he had called him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion for your fellow servant? Compassion being love just as I had pity for you. In other words, you experience forgiveness, and it's from that experience you can express. And his master was angry, delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to each of you from your heart, if your heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Now, this was preached under the law, all right, which is why uh, the punitive part of Jesus here sounds very, very strong. Right Now, we know under grace you're forgiven because of Jesus, not because of your ability to forgive others. So it's not an imprisonment that comes from God now, it's an imprisonment that comes from self. And that now that because of withholding forgiveness doesn't stop God's flow once again, but it, it blocks our ability, imprisons us to that issue. As long as we contend with our humanness, we have the ability to be offended. That's why every day is live trusting into the Christ life, which is the love life that has been imparting imparted. As we grow, so does the love life. And the manifestation or the expression of love and action is walking in a spirit of forgiveness every day. 